And so now we've explained very scripturally uh, tithing. Uh, now we want to go into offerings. And so an offering would be anything above a tithe. Um, you know, we, we often call it in the New Testament, you'll hear faith, promise, mission, you'll hear tithing, but essentially it's all grace giving. We're in the age of grace, and so we're supposed to, you know, we're, we're really a tithe is, is just giving back. God has given us everything. We're just giving back. He only requires 10%. Think about it. People complain about that, including myself. Uh, but but if, if I let you borrow $100 and then you say, okay, here's my $100. You gave all of this to me. Uh, I'm going to pay you back now. And I said, no, 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 just give me 10 bucks. You would jump for joy. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be your favorite person in the world. And, and that's all. That's what the Lord is doing. He's saying, hey, I give you. Yeah, absolutely. God said, "Hey, I, I give you know, I give, I give it to all to you. You know, every every penny that you have, everything that you are, um, I'm just requiring ten percent back. That's all, and that that's what a tithe is. And so, an offering would be anything above that. We mentioned earlier, both of us, you know, giving above that to uh, uh, special offerings, benevolences, funds, things like that. You know, feeding somebody, uh, also faith, promise, mission, and and so. Um, I've been a part of two churches that were a part of Faith Promise Mission Giving. Uh, we're going to be doing a Faith Promise Missions uh, conference coming up in March. And so if you, you've you been a part of this for a while, you, you've uh, had these yourself, and uh, obviously you're going to be a big part of this one here. Uh, so could you just explain to everybody what exactly the, the premise of Faith Promise Missions is? What it says, it's by faith, I promise to give God such and such. Now again, this is above the tithe. This is... Uh, greater than the tithe. This is not part of the tithe. And so by giving to missions, now when we when we give the tithe, that's to the storehouse, that's to the local church, right? That's that's we give that to God through the local church. And the local church uh, deems to use that as as needed. And so we give that, but we're giving it to the Lord, not to the pastor. We give it to the Lord. And so once we give that, then however the church deems to use that, then that's you know, we we can't gripe about that. Uh, so we can't designate the tithe. The tithe is just to the church. But we can designate the offerings. The offerings, I can say, if I, I want to give above my my tithe, and I say I want to give twenty dollars to the teen department, well, I can write that down and say, okay, I want to give here's my tithe, and then this twenty dollars, I want you to use it for the teen department. Uh, if I want to give above my tithe and give towards missions, because you know missions, missionaries, and works across the globe that are reaching people for the Lord. It's our responsibility to, to support them, to help them, because we can't go to every country, we can't go to every place, but we have missionaries that represent us, and they go to these places, and so, but they also need funds to, to live and survive and, and, and minister. You know, they need tracks, and they need buildings, and they need sound equipment, and they need salaries. And so we as Christians here in America, or wherever we might live, we help the cause of world evangelization by giving towards missions. And so this is above the tithe, and by faith, I promise, that's why it's called faith promise, by faith, I promise to give two missions $5 a week, $10 a week, $20 a week, whatever, $20 a month, whatever the Lord needs you to give. But it's by faith. You say, Lord, I, I don't know uh, where this is going to come from. I don't know if I even have this, but uh, by faith, I'm going to, as you provided for me, I'm going to give it. Now, uh, we, we can look at First Corinthians, or excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter 8, where it talks about uh, an offering that was being collected and gathered for the saints of Jerusalem who were struggling and having a hard time. Uh, and by faith, you know, that congregation of Corinth gave. You know, we don't have time to read that entire passage, but that's the premise. The premise is by faith, I'm trusting God, and I'm going to give an extra above my time, 5, 10, 15, however much God needs you to give, you know, for that faith promise offering. Yeah, and you mentioned something earlier too about about our offerings above you know faith promise. Um, you know, I go as far now again as I've matured, as I've grown, uh, to if I want to give a special offering like for a for a person. You know, I know someone's struggling. I want to be a blessing. I don't just go up to them and hand them a hundred bucks. I don't I don't you know ask Pastor Morales to hand them a hundred bucks for me. I go to the person that writes the checks from the church and say, here's a hundred dollars uh, for you know this particular person for this reason, and I have them write it. A check from the church and allow the pastor of the church to deliver that uh, because God's plan is to work through the true New Testament local church. And by us doing that, uh, I don't get the glory for giving that money to somebody. God gets the glory because the the bride, right? The bride, uh, it, you know, is to lift up the you know the husband, just like the Holy Spirit and, and us, the church, are to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when when it's given from the church. 
that is that is uh, is the way that God has designed it, but also that is the way that God gets the glory for it. And That's a great else. point, Pastor Sujo. You know, great point. Uh, we should be working in conjunction with and through the local church. Uh, okay. We should try to do everything. Again, this is why we don't. And I've, we've said it before in the previous podcast. We're not against parish church organizations. They have their place, you know. But the tithe is the Lord to belong to the local church and our giving. Uh, I mean, we can give above our tithes to parachurch organizations, but again, there's no promise, you know, that, that that's going to go to where they say it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the church, it's going to go to the work of the church, uh, and that's where it needs to be. That's that's where God has promised to, to bless, not a parachurch organization. So stay connected as much as you possibly can to the local church. Absolutely, and we didn't talk about it at all in these podcasts because we're talking about the next step of the individual. Uh, but, you know, we know we've gone over uh, the part of the Great Commission of what we're supposed to be doing, uh, but we didn't go over at all where we're supposed to be doing it, right? And, and we're told to do this, to go soul winning and share the gospel and, and do all these things, get people saved, baptized, part of the church, discipled here in Jerusalem, which is what the, our tithe goes to, reaching Jerusalem, but then into Judea, uh, Samaria, and to the uttermost. And so, you know, we're starting a church planning ministry where we want to plant churches around, up and down the I-95 corridor. That would be our, you know, Judea, Samaria, things like that. And then our foreign missions would be would be considered the uttermost. Um, and so I, I asked Pastor Morales to say this quote because I love it. You said this at a missions conference I was at. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't a missions conference, but you had a missionary presenting uh, at a revival you were having, and I was there. And so I asked you to share this quote uh, because, remember, all every aspect of the Great Commission is for every individual Christian to be fulfilled through the authority of the local church. And so that means, you know, I can't personally, physically reach Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost. And so how would we do that then, Pastor Morales? Yeah, no, this is a great quote. I love it. it, it the quote goes, some will go, in other words, some people will go and travel to foreign countries and, and be missionaries. Some will stay. So not everybody will go, and not everybody will stay. All should pray, because everybody should be a part of praying for missions, endeavors, and all should pay. So some will go, some will stay, all should pray, and all should pay. And everyone won't won't go, but everyone can pray. Everyone won't go, but everyone should give towards the effort of those who are going. Absolutely, amen. Second Corinthians 9, 6, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. So the, less, the, the least amount we give, the least amount we give back. But he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposeth in his heart, or as the Holy Spirit guide and lead the individual, talking about offerings here in faith, promise, mission, above the tithe. The tithe is a, is a non-negotiable. This is above that. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide and lead you and me individually. We don't judge each other for that because God works uh, through individuals in that way. Um, it says, uh, uh let every man, as he purposeth in his heart, let so let him give. And here's how here's the key to doing it as well. Again, we're talking about proper motive and doing right, uh, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So first Corinthians sixteen two says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. He wants us to give willingly, he wants us to give consistently, faithfully, and upon the first day of the week, when we meet on Sundays, when we gather together at the church house, uh, that's when we should be giving. Now, that doesn't mean that every time we give, it should be only on Sunday. I, I get all that, you know, it's, it's, but it's, it's a matter of having the consistency, the faithfulness, uh, the schedule uh, to give. Uh, this is not something that, you know, I have to think about, pray about. I know I'm going to give. Every time I, I, I receive some sort of increase, I'm going to give. It's, we're going to tithe on it, we're going to give on it, we're going to give offerings from it. Uh, that's just automatic, and it, it starts that way from, you know, developing the habit. Yeah, and, and you know, you got to realize that in this day and age, they didn't have, you know, mail, they didn't have email, they, they didn't have give online, they didn't have text to give like we have, and so literally they had to do it when they were meeting, and of course they met in the church house on the first day of the week. Amen to that. Uh, I love it, I love it. And so we, we are trying to encourage all our listeners that are Christians, you're saved. If you're not saved, this, these are the steps. If you're not saved, get saved. If you're saved, you're not baptized, get baptized. If you're saved and you're baptized, you got a member of a local New Testament church, join a local New Testament church. If you're a member 
Um, and and you, you say you're baptized, you remember, but you've never been discipled. Go through discipleship. Uh, if you've been through discipleship, uh, you're not going soul winning. Get involved. This is the next step. It's just the, it's, it's building and building and building in your Christian walk. Absolutely. And if you've been discipled, learn how to disciple somebody. Or if you've learned how to do, start discipling. Same thing with soul winning. If you've gone as a silent partner, start speaking. Um, same thing with giving. If you've started tithing already, well, they promise missions coming. You know, missions stuff is coming. Offerings above. And again, the or if, you have, if you're not tithing, start tithing. Yeah, absolutely. It's whatever your next step is. That's the idea of the next step. And so the last couple of verses that we're going to read here, and we're going to close with this. Uh, again, it's we always want to end with the why, the application. What is the main reason we're trying to tell individuals to do this? Um, it's not for ourselves. It's not for the church. Uh, it's that we desire fruit to your account. And so, Pastor, go ahead and read those verses in Philippians for us. Yeah, Philippians 4, 17 through 19 uh, tells us, Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And, and when we give, when we give our offerings, our tithes, and our missions giving to the church, the work that is done through that church, through that ministry, and through the extended ministries of that church, the missionaries, and all of that, whatever productivity is seen, man, we're part of that. That that, that will be a, applied to our account, at least a portion of that, because we contributed, because we were participating uh, in helping that to happen. Verse 18 says, But I have all in a battle. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, and I love this phrase, well-pleasing to God. When we give Man, it's an odor, it's a sweet smell, it's a sacrifice, it's acceptable, and pleases the Lord. And then, the, the, the other side of the coin, which is God says, man, and I'll bless you. In verse 19, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We are blessed by giving. The liberal soul shall be made fat, Proverbs says, and he that watereth shall be watered also himself. And so... Uh, it's it's oxymoronic. It, it doesn't make sense. But when we give, God says, hey, I'll, I'll take care of you. Amen. God's economy is not our uh, economy. His Amen. ways are not our ways. But I'm telling you from a man who spent 31 years doing it his way and the world's way, this way is much better. And the more I've given, back then I never gave anything, and I and I did okay. Uh, the more I've given, the more he's blessed and given me. I mean, it, it, like you said, it's oxymoronic. It doesn't make sense. Um, but but it, it works. It's real. Now, the last portion of the scripture I'm going to read here is one of my favorite. I love the book of Romans, and I love specifically in Romans chapter 15. Now, you know, Paul always had a desire to go to Rome. That was always his desire, but the Holy Spirit would never allow him to go. There was always uh, something else for him to do. And so in chapter 15, he's getting to the point, and, and before we start, the, before the verses that we're reading here, um, he talks about how uh, from Jerusalem all the way to this area, it was like a 1,400-mile stretch. I've preached the gospel to everybody. Anyone that I saw in this area has heard the gospel, and now we're, we're nowhere else to go. I've done everything I need to do. There's churches established. Now, finally, I'm coming to you. And verse 24, we'll pick up reading. It says, Whensoever I take my journey into Spain. So Paul, at this point, is basically telling them, like, listen, this is, this is my plan. You know, I'm, I'm here now. Uh, I'm collecting this offering that you mentioned earlier, the Faith Promise Missions offering of 2 Corinthians 8. I'm collecting this offering. I'm going to bring it to Jerusalem uh, to help them out. Uh, then I'm coming to see you, and you're going to help me with finances and labors to then go and evangelize Spain. This was his plan. Of course, it never came to fruition because he ended up uh, in jail in Rome preaching the gospel and many people getting saved there. But he says, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way to the word by you. I'm going to be brought on my way by you. Basically saying, you know, you guys start, start raising finances because we're going to go and evangelize Spain. And, I, and I'm going to need laborers. I'm going to need finances from Rome, the church at Rome that was healthy, to be able to do this. And so he goes on to say, uh, if, if first I'd be somewhat filled with your company. Verse 25, but now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Again, bringing, he's bringing an offering. That's, that's the ministering that he's talking about. For it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. And here's a key verse right here. Verse 27 says, It hath pleased them verily or truly. So they were really truly pleased to be able to give this offering. God loves a, a cheerful giver. And their debtors, or the men in Jerusalem, the church at Jerusalem, uh, the, the, the men of Macedonia and Achaia are debtors to them. They owe them. 
And you say, well, how? They don't even know these men. Well, that was the church that sent out the missionaries that eventually uh, started the church in Antioch, which sent out Paul and Barnabas, which, which eventually re reached these folks. And so they're debtors to them, just like each and every one of us are debtors to so somebody doing the Great Commission for years and years and years. He says, the debtors they are, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. And so again, when somebody feeds us, feeds us spiritually, we need to help by feeding them carnally or, or in the flesh, you know, with eating and, and their, all their necessities and things like that. Verse 28, and here's key, uh, he says, When therefore I have performed this, talking about bringing the money to them, he says, and have sealed to them this fruit. Now he's bringing finances to Jerusalem. But the them that he's referring to in verse 28 of this fruit is not those in Jerusalem that are going to get the financial aid. It's those that gave. It's not the ones that get. It's the ones that gave. And, and he talks about, uh, like in, in Philippians, where he says, I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And so he's saying, I'm the delivery boy. I'm dropping it off. They're the ones getting the gift. But the fruit that I'm sealing to, to the account is of them that were, that were the givers. And then he says again, just so, just so the Church of Rome knows, and I will come by you into Spain. Get ready, we're going to go evangelize Spain, and I need laborers, and I need finances. Yeah, this is all such an elaborate uh, plan that God has put in, in place for us. But for us, it's very simple, right? It's very simple. We give uh, out of faith. We give of all of our increase. And God will use what every Christian gives. And he'll make sure that people that are reached, that people that are going to be reached, get reached. Uh, again, it's not for us to determine and decide how it all works. It's, also, it's for us to obey and submit to God's plan. And God's plan is for all to give, all to pray, some to go, some to stay, uh, some to serve here, some to serve there. But if everyone does their part, man, the whole world can be evangelized, can be reached for the kingdom of God. Let's do our part. Amen. Yeah, and, and, and you know, uh, if we go and you know and share the gospel, if we give so the gospel could be shared, he will provide the increase. It's his, him that provides the increase. Uh, and I just want to remind you to say that verse uh, that talks about a quote from the Lord Jesus Christ, which actually isn't in Scripture, but he had said it. Yeah, in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, uh, the Lord is quoted as having said, now we don't have this written in the gospels for us, but we know that we don't have everything that the Lord Jesus did and said copied in the gospels for us. But this uh, is stated, the Apostle Paul says, the Lord said, it's, it's better for us to give, it's greater to give than it is to receive. You know, it's better to, re to give than it is to receive. And so if we're going to um, submit to the Lord, if we're going to obey the Lord, then we need to have giving as part of, of our daily life. So one of the things, I'll end with this, one of the things I want to say is, what is better than going to heaven? Well, what's better than going to heaven? It's taking somebody with you. So either by soul winning, uh, that's one way to do that, and then by giving, so that others can others rather can win souls to Christ. It's it's not just about us. Let's do our part to reach others. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And and we know that that when we do, when we're faithful to do the things that the Lord gives us to do, He will bless and people will be rich. As you've heard me say several times this week, again, because a man that was saved just ten years ago. Um, when I was, was faced with the truth of Scripture, I said these words over and over and over again, and, and, and baptism, uh, you know, discipleship, um, and here with giving. And as you just said that quote from the Lord Jesus Christ, if it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I, I wholeheartedly agree with that statement. If it's good enough for the Lord, it's good enough for all of us. Let's do our part, folks. Uh, those of you that are listening, uh, we hope it's been an encouragement to you. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to this podcast. If we can be of service to you in any way, shape, or form, don't hesitate to contact us. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. God bless you.